Let's go over a class of medications known as the HMG CoA reductase inhibitors. HMG is really an acronym that stands for 3 hydroxy 3 methyl coenzyme A. Medications that belong to this class include Rasuva, Atorva, Simva, Lova, Prava, and Fluvastatin. There are a combination of these medications, but that's really beyond the scope of this video. There's one additional medication in this class, and that's Pativastatin. But since it's used so infrequently in clinical practice, we'll go and disregard this one as well. If you notice, with all these medications, they do end the word statin, and this is also known as the statin family. But just because they have the word statin in their name doesn't necessarily mean they belong to part of this class. Some studies suggest that you make the most cholesterol at night as your body enters a fasting state. And most of these medications are taken at time with a few exceptions. With Lovastatin, it should be taken after the evening meal, and that's because food increases absorption. With the Torva and Rosuvastatin, it can be taken at any time during the day, and that's due to its long half-life. With Rosuvastatin, the half-life is about 19 hours, and with the Torvastatin, it's about 15 to 30 hours. An assumption is made is that the patient has a normal day and night schedule. In terms of drug interactions, Rosuva and Fluvastatin are CYP2C9, the Torva, Simba, and Lova are CYP3A4. All are lipophilic with the exception of Rosuva and Fluvastatin, which are hydrophilic. This probably makes the drug much more difficult to pass through the muscle cell membranes, thereby limiting some of the side effects commonly associated with this class. Also, Lovastatin is naturally occurring, which can be found in red yeast rice. In order to understand how these group of medications work, it's important to look at the mevalonate pathway. Here, HMG-CoA gets converted to mevalonate using an enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase. Mevalonate goes through a series of enzymatic steps, eventually leading to cholesterol and coenzyme Q10. If you recall, coenzyme Q10 is actually involved in the electron transfer chain. Statin acts as a competitive inhibitor to HMG-CoA reductase, thereby blocking this rate limiting step. This leads to a decrease in cholesterol and decreased coenzyme Q10. Studies have implicated that decrease in coenzyme Q10 is associated with increased side effects. Some clinicians have recommended patient supplement to minimize chances. For the sake of completeness, HMG-CoA reductase is also a highly regulated enzyme, modulated by AMP kinase and HMG-CoA reductase phosphatase. It is further modulated by calmodulin and cyclo-AMP, respectively. So, with the decrease in cholesterol, it activates a protease that cleaves the steroid regulatory element binding proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum. This translates to a nucleus to upregulate the expression of the LDL receptor gene, which increases the LDL receptor expression thereby increasing the receptor-mediate endocytosis of LDL. This decreases serum LDL with a modest increase in HDL with the highest being resuvastatin, also a modest decrease in triglycerides. Dosage equivalency is based on percent LDL reduction. RAS-LPF is the best way to memorize this. You can create whatever mnemonic you want to help you commit this to memory. With the exception of the very first column, you notice a repeating pattern 1, 2, 4, and 8. Add your zeros, and you have your dosage equivalency chart. Stands are direct myotoxins. They can cause muscle pain and muscle spasms. They can cause rhabdomyolysis. They usually occur within weeks to months, but really at any time after initiating therapy. 0.1% of severe myopathy with the lowest instance being fluvastatin or suvastatin. On stopping therapy, symptoms usually resolve within days to week. The instance increases with acute and chronic renal sufficiency, obstructive liver diseases, hypothyroidism, whereas the dosage increases. Please note that these are category extra, so we want to avoid them in pregnancies. In terms of adjustment for renal function, there are no absolute contraindications. It's really based on the patient's overall clinical picture, the patient's response, and the provider's clinical judgment. In terms of lovastatin and fluvastatin, they just caution of going above 20 and 40 milligrams respectively. With simvastatin and pravastatin, they just recommend a lower dose at 5 and 10 milligrams initially, and with suvastatin, recommend starting at 5 with the 10 milligram maximum. With monitoring, there are no routine monitoring required. However, most clinicians will order for a baseline lipid panel, liver function test, CPK, BMP, and a thyroid panel with repeat labs as necessary. Below is a summary of the new dosing recommendations made for it by the manufacturers in regards to simvastatin and lovastatin. Please note that if a patient has been on a particular regimen for quite some time, providers have often decided to continue the regimen and just monitor for side effects. As you recall, simvastatin and lovastatin are CYP3A4 uh, substrates, and with strong CYP3A4 inhibitors, it's now contraindicated. Dosing limits have also been adjusted as well.